All right, so in our um, warm up kind of introduction this morning, we did example number one together. So we are still on page 15 and we're going to complete example number two at this point. Um, example number two, you can split up in a couple different ways, totally up to you. Um, if you wanted to, you could actually split this in half here, recognizing that it's two trapezoids, or you could split it up recognizing that we have a square or rectangle of some sort here, as well as a triangle. And the square rectangle is going to be, and the triangle is going to be my process here for this particular one. So when I look at the area of this, I have the triangle plus seven and seven. So this actually is going to be a square here. So what I'm going to do then is fill in my formulas first, and then I'll go to the picture and start to look at some of the dimensions here. So for a triangle, my area is one half base times height. And for the square, I have S squared, where S is the size. Now, looking at a triangle, um, my height needs to go from the tippy top to the very bottom of it, and then the base is perpendicular to that. So I do know this side is 7, which also means this side is 7. Since I don't know anything about those sides, I don't know if that's a right angle, I can't really use that as a base and a height. So it looks like if I know this whole side is 7, Right here, if this whole thing is 11, wouldn't that leave from the top of the triangle to the bottom 4 meters here? So I could actually draw this in, and that would be my height there, so 4 meters. So my height, and remember that little trick, here's your H, and then down here the 7 would be my base. So plugging in those numbers then for my triangle, 1 half, the base is 7, height is 4, plus looking at my square, the sides are all 7, so plus 7 squared. Remember, I'm going to ask you to do these separately, kind of as different chunks, and then we'll add it all together at the end. So 1 half times 7 times 4 is going to give me 14, plus 7 squared is going to be 49, and if I have 14 plus 49, I will get area is 63, and I still need a label here. So it looks like all my labels are meters. So this is going to be meters squared then. Taking a look at example number three, um, we're going to try and figure out what shapes we have working to make up this. And notice that there is already a line drawn across here. So I can see down here that I have a rectangle, and then up here that I have a semicircle. Notice that that 4 meters is going to come all the way across, which means that I only am going to need a radius here. So my radius is 2 meters. We're kind of doing a little preliminary work here. So if we're trying to find the area of this, we're going to have a rectangle plus the semicircle. And that's a terrible semicircle, but we'll make it work. For a rectangle, going to my formula sheet, my formula is LW. For a semicircle, this is half of a circle. So half of means to multiply, and area of a circle is pi r squared. So plugging in then, my length and my width are 4 times 8. Looking at the semicircle, I have 1 half times pi times my radius is 2 squared. So here, again, my two separate pieces. So 4 times 8 is 32. Over here, I have 0 0.5 times 3.14 times 2 squared. That's going to give me 6.28. And when I add those together, 38.28. Label, everything is meters, so it's going to be meters squared. Taking a look at example number four, I want the shaded part. And if you're looking at this piece here, and all of these, it actually looks like they're all quarters of a circle. Now, it looks like 8 goes all the way across. So if I were to split this up from the center of the circle to the outside, that's going to be 4 centimeters. Change the color here so you can see that a little better. And it looks like that's going to be true on all of these because there's only one dimension given. So all of these have a radius of 4. So my area here is I have 4 times 
the quadrant we called it. Remember that was a quarter of a circle. So area formula for a quadrant is one fourth of a circle. And if you look, the four times the one fourth are actually going to cancel each other out, giving you one. And one times any number is just the number itself. So we don't even have to include them. <clears throat> so we have pi times four squared. And doing pi times four squared, we will end up with 50.24 centimeters squared, as we're talking about area. If you go ahead and flip it over to the next page then, we have this one. It looks like a rectangle, but it looks like there's a bite taken out of it. So this one's going to be done a little bit differently because we're missing, instead of adding the quadrant this time, we're missing this quadrant. So we need to take away the quadrant that's here. So when I go to find the area of this, I'm not going to be adding pieces this time. I'm going to actually be subtracting them. So I'm going to have a rectangle minus my quadrant. Rectangle is going to be length times width. The quadrant is going to be one fourth times the circle, pi r squared. So now we need to go find some dimensions. Length all the way across is 12. All the way up is 10, so 12 times 10. If I'm looking at my circle here, I gotta do a little bit of work because I need to figure out my radius. Now I notice this whole side here is 10 and this side right here is only six. So we need to make the whole thing 10, so this part must be four centimeters. So from the center to the outside, my radius, it's four centimeters. So 1 fourth times pi times four squared. So a little bit of calculation time here. 12 times 10 is 120. 1 fourth times pi times 4 squared is going to give me 12.56. And if I subtract that from 120, I'm going to get 107.44 square centimeters here. We're going to skip over this last example that's here. This is going to use the idea of a scale, so we'll talk about that later in the week um, after this one. But that is your lesson on compound shapes.